At least, uh, you know, it looks like the rain has backed off just a little bit here. And uh, so maybe when these Mission King of the Baggers go out, these big 600 and 30 plus pound bikes are going to be able to go out on a track that's a little bit drier at this stage and uh, this is the uh, the other class Roger where we have a championship to decide yeah this is one that I think everybody's been looking forward to one of those classes with the, the three guys within a chance of uh, winning the title uh, we'll just see what happens there you two there's Harley's going to win the title this yes. year but just which Harley rider yeah, that's going to be the story, and it has been uh, a pretty fascinating season on a lot of levels. And there you can see Hayden Gillum up by only two over James Rispoli, and then nine more back to Kyle Wyman, so that puts him 11 out of the lead. And uh, the interesting thing, in that uh, session this morning, James Rispoli was uh, you know, the only guy that was quicker than him was Kyle Wyman by a tenth, and then third was Hayden Gillum by another tenth. So that group that are battling for this championship are covered by two tents in this wet qualifying session this morning, Rod. And right after the the qualifying, they had that miss and challenge race. Hayden Gillen's bike didn't run. Yeah. Didn't make the start. So hopefully they get that sorted. And Rispoli took advantage and drove off to a really nice win there. So it's Mission Baggers, King of the Baggers time at that. The first of two races on this weekend to determine the 2023 champion in the class. So let's get over to Greg White and Jason Pridmore. We're thundering towards the penultimate race for 2023 of Mission King of the Baggers. This round is Moto America Superbikes at New Jersey. Here in Millville, the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship rolls on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, as it sits right now with two races to go, first and second in the championship are two points apart, and third place is only 11 back. And we know it's going to be a Harley-Davidson that wins the championship. Hayden Gillum, James Raspoli, and... Uh, Kyle Wyman have all won races this year. They've all shown some sort of dominance at certain tracks. New Jersey's going to throw in another wild card, I think, though, because as usual, we have some weather coming in, possibly. And the last rider to win a race was James Raspoli. So let's go back and take a look at race number two from Coda in James Raspoli's own words. Man, that was a barn burner. First off, the, the Indians just got beautiful starts, and you could tell that McWilliams... <laughs> McWilliams was in second. I didn't know if he was riding a 500 GP, just plug chopping her, man. I don't know if you wanted to check the spark plugs or what, because we were going freaking slow out there. But, man, it gave Tyler, like, I, that guy had, like, five seconds. I don't know what happened to his bike. But, man, it was crazy. Bobby coming up the outside, skipping the chicane every lap, stuff coming out of his bike. I'm like, do I push behind him or do I kind of back off? Because, like, what are you supposed to do, you know? Like, am I going to crash this thing or what? But... And then I'm just waiting. I'm like, where's Hayden? Where's Kyle? And then I check back, look at the tower in the middle of the race toward two laps to go, and I saw number 10. I was like, man, Travis having a little good one. And then uh, I look out of the last corner, and boom, no one's there. I'm like, holy crap, I'm just going to the slowest race I've ever won, but we'll take it, and holy crap, man, I'm stoked. Woo! Ah, uh, Hog Spoley at his finest. Well, Jay, here's a look at those stats. So Hayden Gillum leads by two points off of two wins and nine podiums. Yeah, absolutely. And you see what these guys have done. They've won at Daytona. We saw Raspoli win there. Hayden's done well at a few. Kyle had that bad round at Brainerd, so it's really made the championship come all the way down to the final round here at Jersey Motorsports Park. Well, speaking of that, let's take a look at the racetrack and what these riders have to navigate because it can be quite tricky, especially if it's wet. Yeah, it's a nice run down to turn one here. Turn one's going to be our main priority as far as passing goes today. Up over a little rise in two. Three C is pretty tricky, Greg. A lot of bumps out of there. Fast turn four into another good place to pass. Turn five. From that point on, the rest of the lap, you're going to be, you see seven, eight, nine there. It's important that your bike works good on the edge of the tire all up through there. Then those fast S's to that last corner. Turn 12, Greg, is probably going to be pretty close to flat out on these baggers as they come shooting across the start finish line. Um, you know, it's going to be, it's a fast lap around here. It's the shortest one that we have on the calendar. Yeah, very little elevation, but can create some great racing. Well, for Hayden Gillum, he adds a new rider to his family. Is he thinking about his family or is he just thinking about this championship? He's getting after it on the other side. Well, everybody, here we go. These bikes, this is going to be a quick start. So 
Uh, they are just uh, going to head out and uh, come around, and we're going to go racing here. And uh, good opportunity to practice a start. Uh, we've obviously that can play such a huge role into how all of this unfolds here. And uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see here uh, after that morning. Uh, qualifying session uh, just who is going to be able to step up because those top uh, three guys were half a second clear of everybody else in those wet conditions but that was this morning conditions are different uh, the rain has eased but the wind is picking up folks oh, oh Kyle, Kyle climbing down I told you the left oh. side of the tires are cold yes you did huge developments oh and he can't get it straightened up it is the baggers race hasn't even started and we have drama mission king of the baggers coverage is brought to you by mission foods the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps by dunlop the official tire of the moto america championship series by geico visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be and by drag specialties an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Drama on the warm-up lap for the number 33, Kyle Wyman, who is knee-deep in this championship. Jason, this is the warm-up oh, lap. Look how easy it happens, too. That's going to be turn 3B, and probably a guy who's got more laps around here than anybody, Kyle Wyman. <laughs> Makes a small mistake. He's got the bike up and running, so that's good. I mean, it's so important that he keeps that thing. He's going he's gonna to get to see it. But with a quick start here, Greg, you got to remember, they've already done a siding lap. They come around. They're on their warm-up lap, and this happens so quickly. But at least he's back up, and it looks like it's not too bad. As you look at the starting grid, Kyle Wyman, let's see if he can get to his place. Ott pole position, O'Hara, Gillum, Wyman, Raspoli, and Bobby Fong. Next row back, Jake Lewis, McWilliams, and Kyle Onsorg, who we saw on the podium at Coda. Flinders, Cody Wyman, also on a Harley this weekend, taking the the, the place of somebody in Frankie Garcia. As we saw, Corey West isn't here, so if Cody's on that bike. Patricia Fernandez there on row five. Greg, we were talking, even be like before the start, we're saying what kind of craziness is going to happen in this race because there's so many wild cards when you consider where this championship is and the three guys that are involved in it, including this guy right here. And uh, you can see they're, they're looks, are they going to wait? Nope, they're not going to no, wait for him. Wait. They're not going to wait for him, which is interesting because no. he's going to be coming through but, the last but corner. But you can't. It has to do with where the pace car is and if you're behind it or not. So here we go. Race action getting underway. And we're away racing. Kyle Wyman is on the racetrack, but we're going into turn number one. And who is it gonna be into turn number one? As we know that we heard Kyle Wyman come across start finish line, so he's about to turn behind everybody else. It's Hawks Spoli. So James Raspoli on the Vanson Hines. Mission, Harley Davidson out to the lead early and there's Hayden Gillum his teammate right behind these two are in this championship and you can see Kyle Wyman way off in the distance yep and that this is there's Kyle coming through now so he actually had to go through and pass the pace car and on I mean he still got to consider how lucky he is that bike's still going now the battle at the front these two teammates are the ones first and second as Raspoli gets in there a little hot runs a little bit wide these are the guys that are actually dicing for the championship. Two points separates Raspoli from Gillum. The only advantage between these two guys at all earlier today in the Mission King uh, the, 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 challenge, the challenge challenge race it was a three lap affair. That's right. It came down to James Raspoli who ended up winning that because Hayden Gillum's bike wouldn't start so I think the advantage you're talking about he's got some extra yes, laps in the thanks, rain does Raspoli. Thanks for helping me there. So yeah so for Raspoli He's the only one, but you can see Hayden's going to be able to just basically go off of what he's seeing from what James is doing. And uh, these two guys are the, the guys that are battling for this championship. Hay Hayden goes out and around that patch. You see Raspoli goes through that patch. And of course, for Hayden Gillum, he's got a lot of laps around here as he's raced the Medallia Superbike race, which already happened before this affair. And so he was able to get some laps as. Hey, Gillum has a look over his shoulder to see where the rest of the field is, and he had to have two looks because these two 
are already up front, and he still makes the pass for the lead. So obviously, Hayden Gillum right now feeling super comfortable. Yeah, he's really comfortable. He was comfortable this morning. But you have to remember too, Greg, they did have a wet warm up this morning, but look at Gillum. He's already starting to walk away a little bit right now from Raspoli, and a victory for him would give him a seven point lead going into tomorrow, as opposed to the two points that he has at the moment. Now keep in mind also, we've already seen Hayden Gillum win a championship this year at Coda. He locked up the Stock 1000 Championship um, with his Disrupt Racing team. So. I think Raspoli's going to have bigger problems, too, because Jeremy McWilliams has moved himself up into third. I'm looking to see where Tyler O'Hara is. He's back in ninth, so not sure what exactly happened to Tyler off the start, but Jeremy McWilliams was quick this morning in the wet also. Raspoli's got to be careful not to fall too far back and lose too many points going into tomorrow's race. Jeremy McWilliams, the 99. Of course, if you think back to his MotoGP days in 2000, he was involved in the race with McWilliams on the two-cylinder Aprilia machine when Valentino Rossi won his very first 500 Grand Prix race. McWilliams was third, and that was in the rain at Donington Park. And that's just a sample of how much experience McWilliams has had in conditions like this. And if there was anyone who could find some speed with these 620-pound Mission King of the Baggers motorcycles. Now keep in mind, they don't have the sophisticated electronics like a Superbike has, even though they have Superbike parts like Superbike swing arms and front ends. But it really, a lot of this, not all of it, Jay, but a lot of it has to do with the right wrist of these riders and their skill set and comfortability here in the wet conditions. Yeah, there's no question. And I think for Jeremy McWilliams, it would be fun to just to see how many bikes he's ridden in his la in his lifetime. I mean, all the different machines that he's been able to ride. But right now, it's all eyes up front with this guy right now, Hayden Gillum, who's continuing to pull away. And a good opportunity for us to welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Antelope. Yeah, guys, for Hayden Gillum, you know, he just came off of a full-length superbike race in these exact same conditions, and most riders might think, you know, I'm a little bit tired, that's a lot of laps, and it's a, it's a big ask to, to race back-to-back -back in this way. It looks like Kyle Wyman is pulling into the pit lane, but like I was saying about Hayden Gillum, you know, he likes all of this seat time, and he's got a great perspective of exactly what these conditions are, so I think that that's definitely given him an advantage here over his teammate, to say the least. Yeah, that's a great point, Hannah, that you bring up, because... The fact that he couldn't do the challenge race earlier, all he really had to do is get used to the bike, and he did get to ride the bike in the rain, and he got to see the lap times that Raspoli did winning that race earlier. So coming straight off that superbike race, having to jump out of that wet suit, put on a dry suit here, as you see Kyle Wyman now looking at the bike, as that there's obviously a problem. Bike got thrown down on the ground there in turn 3B. So for Kyle, this is such a shame because he literally had one bad weekend, Greg, at Brainerd. Uh, point wise and then he had an incident in race two uh, at Coda and both those now are really coming back to bite him yeah, and of course for the championship after this race there's only 25 points available because we only have one more race in the season if Hayden Gillum wins this race and Kyle Wyman can't get back out on the racetrack and score any points that's going to be 36 points the difference but let's think about this too it's not just an individual how about this team the Vance and Hines Harley Davidson team came back this year. They went testing. They put a lot of finance into trying to get their bikes up to par with the factory motorcycles. So for Terry Vance and this whole team at Vance and Hines Harley, for it now to essentially come down to their two riders battling for the championship, it's going to be a Vance and Hines Harley Davidson 1 2, it looks like, in the championship this year for them, Greg. And I think that that's a big coup for this team because I think. You know, all of our emphasis has been on the factory teams of the Harley, factory Harley team, factory Indian team, and it's really going to be this uh, performance uh, that Vance and Hines has put on for, for these guys, for their riders and for their team. It's a it's pretty, pretty interesting story. Just truly amazing. So we have about four and a half laps to go, and there is James Rispoli. He's doing the right thing, Jay. These are the hardest races. If you're oh. second in the points, as Rispoli gets it a little bit sideways, and you want to do that. You want to push hard and try not to let the leader of this championship get away. Coming in here two and coming out with seven could be a big heartbreaker. Now there is, it's not the end of the world, it's not. but I know for Espoli, you've got to really balance yeah. the desire to go forward and the ability to keep this motorcycle on track. Well, what this race does right now, if you look at the two riders in the front, it's going to make Hayden's Sunday a little easier and James's Sunday a little bit harder, but we've seen so much turmoil in this class throughout the course of the year with either mechanicals or tip-offs or whatever it is. We
We've seen so many things, and it can change so quickly in a lap or two. So this guy right now with four laps to go goes 41.8. And to just give you a little bit of perspective, the next guy, 42.9 for Raspoli, so he's 1.1 off. Travis Wyman has worked his way around Jeremy McWilliams, who actually hasn't come by this lap. So Jeremy McWilliams has not come through on this lap. So Wyman is in third. Cody Wyman is yep. now in fourth. There's so, McWilliams coming into the yep. pits. And this is what I mean. We see a lot of this in this class where bikes look like they're running good, and then all of a sudden we have a problem. And uh, that said, the Vance and Hines Harley team this year, knock on wood, I don't want to kill me for saying this, but their yeah. bikes have been fairly reliable at finishing these races. And uh, that, that that's something to be said for. Now at the moment for Rispoli, Travis Wyman is 3.6 seconds back from him. So that takes a little bit of pressure off, but Rispoli still has got to keep a relatively torrid pace because you can see the 10 off in the background, Travis Wyman, who of course here at New Jersey last year was in the championship hunt and fell off and had a disaster of an end of a season for him. And of course, the one thing we did want to mention, and it did happen for a short period of time, Jason, was all three of the Wyman brothers are involved in this race. Kyle started the race, obviously from behind the pace car, but you have Travis Wyman, we're looking at right now, who's currently in third position. And Travis Wyman, of course, on that Harley Davidson scream in Ingle as his brother looks on. And Cody Wyman, the third brother, is in fourth place. The first time that these three had an opportunity to race in the same race. They'll get a go at it tomorrow as heartbreak befalls your former number one plate, Wyman. Hannah? Yeah, just going back to what you said, it's the first time in quite some time since back in their really, really early beginning stages of their careers, even in flat track days, for all three Wyman to be on the grid. And I talked to Roger Hayden, and the last time there was three brothers on the grid, it was the Hayden in the late 90s at the start of Roger's super sport career. Yeah, in road racing. Well, one of the problems we have right now is Cody didn't come around this lap. So now it's going to move Onsorg up to fourth, Bobby Fong fifth. So I'm not sure where Cody went on this lap as we continue to see Jake Lewis has gone through now. So we've lost both Kyle and Cody in this race. Travis wow. running around in third. And let's keep in mind, Travis had a great run at Coda, and he tipped off on the last lap, didn't he, in the dry, running second to Raspoli. And those two points, again, come into play because it changed the dynamic of that race. Had that race finished with Travis in second, Raspoli would have come in here with a two-point lead. As it was, Travis falls out, and it turned the page. It made Hayden Gillum come in here now with a two-point lead. And now he has the opportunity to run that up to seven. Two and a half laps to go for Mission King of the Baggers race number one with your championship points leader at the beginning of this race by two points, Hayden Gillum leading from his teammate James Raspoli. The difference between first and second place in this championship is five points. If the race finished the way it is right now, Hayden Gillum would go into the final race of the season only seven points ahead of his teammate Raspoli. And with Kyle Wyman out of this race, if it finishes this way, Jason, with Gillum and Raspoli on those Vance and Hines Mission Harley Davidsons, they're the only two that are going to be left in this championship with the mathematic possibility of winning it. And for Terry Vance, there's got to be celebration tonight because after that, after you know your team wins, JP, it's up to the riders to sort out who's yes. actually going to have the number one play. Yeah, that's exactly right. This will definitely ease that team as far as, you know, hoping that one of them are going to win the championship. This result today for Raspoli right now, he was about two tenths off of the lap time of Gillum, but uh, he's got about a four second gap on Travis Wyman at the moment. So for James, he's going to have to go to the drawing board hard tonight and try to figure out what he can do to try to keep pace with the 79 here of Hayden Gillum. Because if I know Hayden, he's going to try to go out and do the exact same thing. At Coda, all he had to do was kind of finish the second race in Stock 1000. He went out and won it. So he's going to be coming back tomorrow to just try to do the exact same thing he's doing right now. Hannah, what do you know about what's going on with Kyle Wyman? So for Kyle Wyman, starting from behind the pace car, I checked in with race officials to see if there would be a penalty, if he would have to do a ride through of some sort. And they said they were discussing it amongst themselves up in the race control, and they would let me know as soon as they heard. But unfortunately, it, Kyle pulled into the pits of his own accord. It seemed to be something was wrong with the bike after that tip over. Yeah, and, and we don't doubt it. And it wouldn't surprise me if there was something that caused the tip over, Jay, because it was kind of unusual. It was, a, it was an unusual. Accident. Yeah, where yeah. it happened on the warm-up lap. 
Uh, that might have been some of that, or definitely these things happen after crashes. But it would have been some task, by the way, for Kyle Wyman. If you've ever ridden on a motorcycle before, I don't care if you're on the street or on the track and you've crashed, a certain feeling and adrenaline and a rush when you hit the deck because you're always supposed to be on the bike. And to be able to shake that off in a matter of corners and get back to racing is something of legend. One lap to go here in Mission King of the Baggers, race number one, and it's Hayden Gillum who off the start of the race was able to pass his teammate James Rispoli and take over the lead, and he hasn't looked back since. And he is now 8.9 seconds ahead of his teammate as he hasn't looked to be bothered at all, Jason. Yeah, and that said, Travis Wyman goes 43-4 and gains two seconds that time on James Rispoli. So he's only two seconds up the road is Rispoli from Travis Wyman. This guy's not really caring about that as he's got basically a nine-second lead. He's gone. He's got about half a lap to go. The real battle now is going to come down to second place between Rispoli and Wyman if James is having any kind of problems at all with his motorcycle at the moment because Travis gained two seconds. That's a big chunk when you consider those guys are running second and third to have a, a two-second uh, gap there. And he's closed up another six-tenths in the first split. Here you go. There's Rispoli as they're lapping Patricia Fernandez right now. Travis Wyman now is getting closer and closer. So we're going to have to keep an eye on these two as they get closer because Wyman now is within a half a second. So he's gained a good second and a half in this lap on the 43 of Rispoli. So Travis is going to do everything he can to try to get himself a second place finish. Yeah, and that difference, of course, is four points. So for Rispoli, if he gets passed on this last lap, the difference has got to be nine points. So it'd go from two to 11 instead of two to seven. And that could make the big difference for the 79 of Hayden Gillum. He did what he did to make his life easier on Sunday. Coming onto the front straightaway for the final time. And, and Mission King of the Baggers race number one. It is Hayden Gillum who takes victory and a little bit of a smooch for the front fairing of his Mission King of the Bagger. And coming to the line, it will be James Rispoli finishing in second place. And Travis Wyman, an all Harley Davidson podium once again for Mission King of the Baggers. Yeah, the highest Indian placer is going to be right here. As you see, coming across the line, Kyle Onsorg ends up fourth. So. Nice little run of, of uh, results for him. 41.801, which will also be the fastest lap of the race. On lap number four for Hayden Gillum, as you take a look at the left part of your screen, that's the Dunlop race pace for you. And he just looked so comfortable on the oh, bike. Man, it looked too easy, didn't you know, it? That initial pass, remember, he looked back twice on the front straightaway and then just kind of eased on by his teammate, Rispoli. Yep. Yeah, and you can see James giving him the kudos. I mean, he was 1.1 seconds as far as fastest lap to the next best. That was Rispoli at a 42.9. So uh, good day for Hayden Gillum. We'll be back with more Mission King of the Baggers and a winner interview after this. What a year for a guy named Hayden, the way he is putting uh, 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 this stuff together here. And he did have a little advantage, obviously, having run that uh, uh, that super bike race. So in those first few laps, he had a bit more of a clue maybe. But, uh, you know, number of laps in, he's still unclocking some really quick laps. So uh, just a superb ride once again for Hayden. Yeah, it just seems like this year, whenever Hayden needs to step up, he has. Yeah. You go in Dakota and stock 1,000, needed a couple wins, got it, comes here this weekend. Needs to win to win the title and comes here and, and wins. And he looked good this morning in the warm-up in the wet. Yeah. Looked really comfortable. Almost looks like he's having fun out there in the wet. Everybody else looks a little timid. He looks like he's just out there on a Sunday cruise. So for him, just great, great ride. And, you know, has to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. And Travis Wyman, one more lap maybe. Uh, that uh, that uh, podium order behind Hayden couldn't uh, uh, could have changed and then a uh, great run for Kyle Onsorg up into a fourth after his first ever podium at Coda. But here's one of the big developing stories here, folks. We've been talking about this weather. Well, there you see, uh, the, you know, what's happening. That's us. And now the circulation of that storm is getting ever closer. And uh, just looking at the weather, wind gusts now are approaching 30 miles an hour. 
And according to a couple of weather maps here, within about 20 minutes, we're supposed to get another band of rain that is going to be coming through. So the next race is Junior Cup, and they're going to be dealing with that just a little bit as well. And for this guy, uh, real quickly, we were kind of speculating if he'd stayed out, if that issue wasn't catastrophic on that bike, he could have been knocking on the door of a top five. Yeah, for whatever reason, just came in, and, you know, just probably felt unsafe and just wanted to, you know, Kyle's got a lot of experience. Yeah, he does. So he, uh, he wouldn't have stopped if he didn't think there was something pretty crucial there. So, wow, more to come here in our coverage of the Baggers. We're going to hear from the podium. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By GEICO. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. And by Drag Specialties, an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Here are the results from race number one, Mission King of the Baggers. Hayden Gillum, James Raspoli, Travis Wyman in third, Kyle Onsorg, Bobby Fong, Jake Lewis, Max Flinders, Tyler O'Hare, Frankie Garcia, and just off there is Patricia Fernandez finishing in 10th place. As we go down to Hannah, who's got our race winner, Hayden Gillum. A big week for Hayden Gillum with the birth of his new child and now a victory. How crucial was this in the charge toward the championship for these points here today? Hey, hey, come here, what's up? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a big deal. And uh, yeah, it sucks, it sucks whatever happened with Kyle, that sucks. You know, I know it was gonna be a, it was gonna be a dog fight this weekend for sure with health, all three of us so close in points. And uh, yeah, I, either way it's, it's pretty special. We just had a had a new little baby daughter on Sunday, and uh, yeah, to follow it up with with the first win of the weekend, and going we we locked up one two in the championship for Vance and Hines. So that's uh, that's pretty freaking awesome, and it's gonna be a dog fight. I know James is gonna put it to me tomorrow, so it'll be. We're, I'm looking forward to it. Sounds like Hayden Gillum is having a lot of fun out there, and why wouldn't you be when you're winning races? James Raspoli, second place today for you. Take us through the start of that race, kind of lonely out there. Tell us about it. Yeah, it was super lonely race on the warm lap. I saw Kyle crash, and I was like, holy crap. I can't believe we've just been given that gift. And I got a good start, and I was just kind of cruising. But right away, I don't know if it was the wind or just the conditions changed a little bit. But for me, I was struggling with grip right away and didn't have the – the grip I had in the challenge, I felt super comfortable, and I just didn't feel comfortable at all. And when uh, Hayden came by me, I was like, you know what, today's not the day to toss in the kitty litter, tomorrow will be. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to keep the championship alive here, and, you know, I can go after Hayden tomorrow and see if I can't do anything to try to beat him, and we'll see. James is probably still in the fight, and it sounds like no holds barred for tomorrow. Rounding out your Mission King of the Baggers podium, Travis Wyman. It's been quite some time since I've been able to say those words. How is this race for you? Hey, and believe it or not, this is my first podium of the year, and it, All right, it means well, a lot to me. For James and Wes and Jason and Jordan, and he's going to win guys, it or bin it. We'll uh, be back with more in a minute. Come on strong, late. All right, it is. Uh, an amazing uh, scenario that is unfolding here with Kyle Wyman out of it. And, uh, it, you know, obviously you could see uh, that was about as dejected a, 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 a Rispoli with a podium as I've ever heard. Yeah, and I think going from the challenge, he probably felt like he really was going to go into this race. We talk about the wind and him not feeling the grip. Yep. It's getting cooler. Yeah. The track, you know, is cooling off. And that, that makes a big difference. You see there's Cody Wyman's bike. Uh, I think he crashed over by turn three, possibly, mm -hmm. I think I heard. So uh, hopefully he's up and okay. But, uh, yeah, James Raspoli just looked like I think he expected to have a little bit more pace. But he did the right thing. He kept it on two wheels, and he goes in tomorrow, and he still has a good chance. But Hayden now can kind of, if it's just those two, he can kind of just set back if he wants and, and, and take a second. And look at that little young man up on top of, of Dad's shoulders up there in the breeze. He's uh, That hair is flying. He's grinning. Look at that. That's my papa right there. He just won. And uh, James, uh, he's just ruining, uh, you know, and, uh, and musing on the moment there. He's having a little bit of fun here as well. So tell you what, 
It, uh, what a fun podium here for the Baggers. And uh, wow, having some fun. And they both deserve every minute of it. We're back at New Jersey Motorsports Park. And here's a look at that championship. Rispoli, seven points back from Hayden Gillum. And Rispoli said he's going to have that win it or bit of attitude. Unfortunately for Kyle Wyman, he is out of this championship. So for the Vance and Hines mission, Harley Davidson team. They wrap up one and two in this championship, but tomorrow will decide who is your number one plate. As we know that both Hayden Gillum and James Raspoli should be back in Mission King of the Baggers for the 2024 season. What bikes, what teams, we don't know, but one of them is gonna be running the number one plate and they're gonna earn it tomorrow. For Hannah and Jason, I'm Frank, we'll see you then.